I've sort of already talked about this in other videos, but it's how to create a positive spin on bad news. Um, so whenever you're reading for someone, we, well, most of us, right? We were, we're like, okay, I want to leave with my person feeling magical and restored and healed and great and wonderful. And, uh, I'm definitely that way. I want my people to feel better when they leave after a reading, but I, my approach to reading is to be healing and to be supportive and maybe yours is different and that's okay. So whenever I have an outcome card or something in the future position that looks uncomfortable or looks disastrous, heaven forbid, or looks just, just like kind of like bad news. Like it's kind of like when a doctor has to give bad news, it has to be done. Um, but the doctor doesn't come in and just be like, Hey, <laughs> you got three months. Peace. Uh, so I feel that, uh, this is tarot bedside manner guys. <laughs> um, the best way that I have experienced to deliver uh, more negative outcomes in a in a more helpful and supportive light is to consider what the outcome is. And instead of going, hey, really bad stuff's going to happen, uh, you instead lay out support, guidance, advice and um intervention methods, just just like a doctor would. So if a doctor is sitting there going, okay, we, this is the diagnosis that we have, they're probably not gonna focus on the diagnosis, they're gonna focus on what they could do, right? So we're gonna do the same thing, we're gonna have that diagnosis sitting there, but we're gonna focus on what's around it, what can I do? So if I saw, I usually like to do financial, um, but I'm gonna do breakup this time. So if I saw someone that was heading for a relationship end, um, then maybe what we're going to look for on the cards is something like, oh, okay, you know, right now would be a really good time to get involved with um, some hobby groups or like maybe like basically you would be offering them something that's going to enhance that sense of community around them. I'm doing this based on the reading. This is not the same for everybody, but we're making this up. I have someone who's going through a breakup and they need their people around them to feel good. So what we're going to do then is get their community built up around them first so that when that breakup happens, then they have something already created for them to fall back on. I have had this come up where I uh, saw someone really, some, someone's relationship ending. They, my sitter already knew that they were kind of going in that direction. And the advice to them was to start focusing on work. So it was that, it was like, hey, you've got these projects going on at work. Um, just put a lot of energy and effort into those and just let the relationship be for what it is. Um, I've also talked to people with uh, breakups coming and uh, another thing I will usually tell them is just, and, and again, it depends on your reading and what you see. In my cases, um, these breakups were kind of just going to happen as in they, it just would happen. Like there's some sort of natural break or um, something occurs that just leads it to that place. The biggest thing, and this is really strong moral um, ethic system of mine, is don't mind fuck people. Are you allowed to swear on YouTube? Okay, well I did. I don't just sit there and go, hey, your relationship's gonna end. That's rude, okay? People already have attachments to relationships. They have attachments to material things. They you don't just you don't just leave someone, you don't drop a bomb and then be like, thanks for your money, bye. Help people. Like, like, can we help people? Please let's help people. So, so do your best to actually be diplomatic and to be um, articulate and choose your words wisely and take your time. If you're not sure, I actually had a really awkward situation once where I was sitting there going, I could see in the cards that there was like another woman and I was really uncomfortable because I didn't want to mention it because well, what if she doesn't know about this other woman and what if... I am just bringing mistrust into her relationship. And um, at the time I was really young in my reading and it's like, what if I was wrong? What if I saw another woman, but it wasn't really another woman. And I just, you know, mentioned this and then put her into this tailspin for no reason. Like this was a really big ethical quandary for me. Um, so what I did in, in that particular moment was I actually just started asking her a lot of questions. And what I came to know through those questions was that 
she was actually aware of another woman. And so I was like, okay, whew. So this wasn't me dropping a bomb. She knew. So then we could create a dialogue about this other woman and, and what was kind of coming up in the read. But ultimately, if you're not super sure or super comfortable about what's coming up in your reading, one thing I would say is if you don't want to talk about something that came up in the reading because you don't honestly feel right about bringing it up, which is that mindfuck thing, uh, don't. And what'll happen or what I've noticed happen is, uh, cause in, in a reading, I will do multiple spreads or multiple, uh, hands. I call them hands. Like what does, what does they have a name? Anyways, I will put the cards down in a row again. Oh yeah. Good tarot teacher. Okay. Come see me. I teach you all the things. Oh God. Okay. Anyways, uh, I find that if I'm supposed to tell someone something and it's very important, it will come up again and again and again. And usually by the third or fourth time it's come up, I have figured out a way or I've intuited a way to deliver that information in a way that is safe for that person to receive it. So that's kind of how I would say that as far as like, so you can, you can also communicate in your head, right? To your network. If you're like, Hey, yeah, not super comfortable delivering that message. Can we like reword that? Send that to me a different way. Tell me again, you can pull more cards on it if you want to, if you feel like you can do that without, um, like triggering worry from your seer, uh, sitter. I was going to say seeker and sitter at the same time. Anyways, um, yeah. Okay. I'll leave that at that for today. Cause I kind of lost my train of thought. Hopefully that gives you like a little bit of insight on that. And yeah, if you want to like this video, that would be great. If you want to click subscribe, I would appreciate it. And I'm on Patreon. If you want to go check me out there. Bye.